Everybody, it's me again, Pat Windrow at the Cable Diesel. You caught me in the midst of working on this thing of part two of a thing called, well, Flanders Ice, I suppose is a good title, or Goose Creek in winter. Uh, that's what it is. It is, it is a, uh, an area way over there on the eastern end of the island in the township of uh, Southampton. And uh, it's on uh, a place called uh, Reeves Bay, which feeds into Flanders Bay, which comes from the Peconic River. Uh, a complex uh, little, little piece of information there, but it's always nice to know exactly what it is that I'm working on and where it can be found. Um, the first part was the layout and the general feeling about how you interpret ice and then now comes the um, the rather more challenging thing of making it look like ice uh, there are so many different strange patterns going on that um, it is going to be up to me to be able to convince you that this is a uh, this is a, a, a weather condition which may or may not occur again for a very long time. There is um, there is so many gradations of color in the um, in the what, what happens to water when it freezes that um, I have to be able to make sure that uh, I can capture that in order to convince you that that's what I'm doing. So here we have um, the use of that killer color called thalo green, something which I rarely use and don't advise using unless it's one of these weird situations where whereby it's called for. I have a feeling that this is one of those weird situations whereby you can in fact use some phthalo green but with a tremendous amount of care. A phthalo green can only be applied to uh, glamorous and strange exotic flowers or into translucent ice formations such as there are uh, on this particular uh, composition. Um, what it is that does it, I'm not sure. It's the refraction of light, it's the thickness of the ice. It's also what happens when, uh, when different temperatures of water take place in, in the tropics. This kind of a pale green is found very often and um, it's because of the coral underneath, uh, the coral sandbanks upon uh, uh, which is uh, beneath. Uh, here it's not coral sandbanks, here it's something entirely different. However, um, let me let me concentrate now on the uh, on the boat because the boat is an important part of this composition. It sits up there, upside down, uh, as the one uh, indication that human habitation takes place here uh, in this part of the world because there is a, a man-made boat. The rest of it is uh, sand and greens and ice and uh, formations that are um, that are obviously only to do with nature. This this boat, uh, which uh, may or may not be uh, uh, the the owners of which may not be aware that it is out there in something uh, some sort of trouble. Maybe they are aware of it and uh, obviously unable to do anything about it now until the weather permits. So, but it's a lovely prop, and it's the kind of thing that um, painters want to find. And when you find it uh, this way, then you've been given uh, a, well, almost a ready-made composition. Uh, the, the the boat is obviously uh, a blue one, uh, having caught a little bit of the of the uh, and the monitor will tell you when you get a close up of it that it is absolutely covered with a uh, little um, little snow snow sheep I call them little snow sheep they um, the the wind has blown and the fr and the snow has obviously frozen on the on the top of this boat. However, it is uh, it is still uh, it is still uh, its outline is still clear and I'm going to I'm using a brush to be able to get the details because if you don't make an upside down boat clear it's going to look like um, just about anything you can think of. Um, 
the uh, the snow formation on top can be probably just uh, done with some overlay later of little uh, w when this dries enough I can do an overlay of the uh, of the little snow sheep that are on top of it but in the meantime I'm just going to uh, give you the form the outline of the boat as as I see it uh, it's a little bit uh, pale on this end because the sun is hitting it and is there anything quite as wonderful looking as when the sun uh, strikes um, an object and lightens that side of it for a, for a painter or anybody who is um, artistically uh, aware of what is happening uh, the the sun hitting an object is what makes the whole business of painting pictures worthwhile it, it's on a it's on a dark and sun uh, without sunday that you find yourself in sort of deep trouble to make it uh, to make it interesting however there is the general outline of that uh, of that boat let me see it's got some it's got a stripe in between it, which I may or may not pay attention to depending upon whether or not it's going to add something to the composition, but it is a pale stripe uh, along the edge of that boat. Mm, let me see if I can just sort of swipe it in there uh, and, and see if it makes any sense. Well, we'll see. We'll see a little bit later when the, when the time comes to, uh, to cover the boat with snow. There is, a, there is a, a moment that you do these things and you, uh, you have to wait for paint to set before you can do overlays. So that uh, pretty much is kind of a, kind of the only way I'm going to show that stripe. And there is that nice uh, sharp line. There. Well, um, behind that is a um, is a is an obviously a, a very snowy place uh, that I'm going to put on on a, with a clean palette knife. Uh, the nice thing about working with palette knife in these snowy pictures is that you can get the palette knife absolutely uh, pristine clean in order to be able to get pure white uh, snow. And pure white is something to uh, is to be concerned with because uh, white certainly does pick up other colors probably faster than any uh, than any other. The uh, the white is behind this boat comes way up uh, to give the outline a very sharp, uh, nice contrast. The, it's very white back here, and the boat is very dark. So uh, all of these things play into your hands when you're looking for uh, for uh, contrasts. Um, uh, the uh, the uh, snow, let's see, there is a nice dark line underneath, oh, one brush down, uh, nice dark line, I don't think I really need it, and if I do, I'll just climb off my stool and get it. Um, there is a dark line underneath, underneath here that tells you that that's where the boat is casting its shadow. Um, I'm going to be using a little bit of this, um, of this uh, cobalt dryer, which of course makes uh, paints uh, flow very easily, but it also makes them dry. Here is, the, here is the shadow being cast by that boat, and here's the very dark area at the, uh, at the rear, and here's that other line that is giving you the, the construction of the boat. Um, there is, a, there is a dark something object that is sticking out from, on the, from the back of it. It looks to me, uh-oh, they're in trouble. That's the part of an outboard motor that has been left on this boat. Uh, heads will roll in that household. That boat was left out to, with the outboard motor on it. Uh, I can see it in the, uh, the close-up monitor. Um, and um, there's the telltale tail of the outboard motor. Uh, sticking out like so, and that should be uh, as clearly uh, as clearly defined as possible, so that it is no doubt in anybody's mind. Here's the fin that sticks out from an outboard motor, which is the telltale silhouette of what's happened out there. And uh, well, good luck, everybody. Uh, I'll, if they do live nearby, I'm sure that they're keeping their eye on this, and we'll go out and rescue that as as soon as possible, because I do believe an outboard motor is worth something like well, maybe three hundred or four hundred dollars. So uh, we have caught them in the act of having left their possessions out there in that storm. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's always interesting to me to find these details because I get more, a great deal more information out of them than is visual uh, immediately. Um, come, some, come some more grass, which can be, uh, which can be probably uh, uh, rendered very rapidly with just a few a few little uh, suggestions of some pale sunstruck grass uh, right here at the uh, at the edge of the boat uh, where the boat is resting and that'll tell you and then it also if I find that it's in that in that close up some of the some of the grasses are also just behind the boat all of these all of these make for uh, for compositions which you can't possibly pull out of the imagination. So much for the, uh, for the programs that say just go ahead and start putting paint on canvas and paint what you think, you, what, what you think is right. It's not possible. You, the, the human mind and the human retentive visuals are not that detailed whereby you'd be able to recall any of these, um, any of these details that I find when I'm out there painting from life. So 
and my whole my whole uh, thrust to being painting from life is uh, is demonstrated every time I run into a detail such as I've just so shown you. Um, the snow has uh, has managed to uh, work its way up this little incline and is up against the shadow of the boat and I'm preparing the um, to put the grass up against that snow because the snow is behind the grass. Um, I'm, I'm working with the with the knife at this point because I like, uh, as I told you earlier, the texture of this snow. And down here, because and this is what makes uh, painting, in my opinion, one of the more uh, intriguing things to do, is that the shadows on snow uh, tend to be extremely dark, uh, especially when the sun is out. And underneath here, the boat is uh, casting a shadow of dark mauve purple. I'm hoping that that purple is visible to you. And and there, is, um, there are some interesting things going on underneath here, not too comprehensible, but nevertheless all part of the composition. And the darkness of this, of this, uh, of this purplish shadow, which is being cast by the embankment here, where the ice flows have taken place, uh, it means that observation is the uh, is the way I got this color. I did I couldn't possibly have invented the tones that I'm using right now. So, uh, in order to be able to make this a convincing piece, uh, all of these elements of color. Uh, uh, tones and contrasts have to be very clearly understood and also uh, observed. Um, the whole thing about my obser observation is that, it's, is that it, it is easier to work from life than it is to try to pick your brains and imagine what something looks like. This is all, the information is all right here given to you and all you have to do is to transfer it from the uh, third dimension, which is what it is out there, to the second dimension, which is with this flat plane on which I'm working. Uh, something that um, uh, is, an, is, uh, is physics, and I'm not, certainly not a physicist, but I understand what, I, what, what has to take place in order to be able to do a, be a realist painter, you transfer the two dimensions, you translate. This is a far, nothing more than a, a very fancy way of translating information. Um, there are those, uh, those shadows. Uh, Simplified, I'm sure, and not not as um, not probably as full of detail and, and uh, as they would be were I doing it for as what I would call a fine arts picture. This is a demonstration. Uh, if it turns out to be closely related to a fine arts picture, that's fine. If it doesn't, um, it's because time has not allowed for the tremendous amount of detail that you need for fine arts work. Uh, but for, as a demonstration, I think it will serve its purpose. Up against that is some are some sharp and uh, uh, jagged uh, ice uh, pieces of ice that are um, that have made formed a sort of a little a little wall of uh, of, of of ice, and uh, it's uh, being put on uh, on the background that I just prepared with those shadow colors. So um, uh, one, once again, it is a layering technique uh, of of going from the d distant part to the near part. That little wall of ice may or may not uh, be um, be comprehensible, and it may or may not be well done. We'll soon find out whether or not, when you step back and look at it, whether or not these things have actually uh, been rendered in such a way that you can believe them. These little walls of ice, it's very, uh, painting, painting this kind of thing is, of course, extremely arbitrary because um, uh, there are no two formations the same. When you paint apples and you paint uh, oranges and you paint flowers, the chances are that they're pretty much the same. Apple around and flowers of petals and so on but this all of this is very arbitrary design uh, that takes place because we're dealing with that elusive thing called nature the wind and the water and uh, and uh, those formations change very rapidly as the light changes and as the wind changes so here I'm going to be mixing some uh, some what I would call ice uh, shadow for this piece right here, it's got a wall of um, a dark wall uh, on on its uh, on its shadow side, and let's see that comes down there, and this is going to have another wall coming leading down into here. All of the uh, shadow is important in these um, in these um, compositions, where all of these forms, as I say, are are extremely arbitrary.
And uh, when you, if, if anybody is foolish enough to think that they can paint one of these things on, on, on the uh, live show, uh, such as I'm doing, because there's no going back here, then you, it, whether I miss it or not, you probably ought to give me some credit for having at least tried it in the beginning. Um, the top of this, uh, of this ice flow here is pale, uh, but it's, it's in shadow. And uh, it's uh, it's when it gets uh, really sunstruck that it becomes extremely pale. So I'll leave that I'll leave that open. This is got a little bit more mauve in it, I think, than what I have mixed. And here is the mauveish side of this ice flow. It's very exciting. It's sort of it's sort of, it's sort of uh, you know it's it's almost like a crossword puzzle. You're trying to decipher what um, what is in front of you. Uh, trying to figure out what all of this means is very is is is, is uh, what as the King of Siam would say a puzzlement. Uh, it's all uh, it's all part of the uh, of the need to uh, be very observant and to also to uh, understand uh, the conditions that are causing all this. Well, I've just gotten a signal that we're going to take a very short break. So, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to break a little bit now. I'll be right back. once again trying to solve the problems of how you render uh, ice formations uh, which are uh, which are none. there's no set pattern for an ice formation it is uh, it's arbitrary and it is elusive so uh, and also the colorists change enormously so the best you the best you could hope for is that you can in fact um, convince your viewer that that's what you're looking at um, when I talk about uh, when I talk about the c color variations it's uh, it's uh, an enormous problem for me to be able to answer questions to to people ask me how do you mix the colors, and um, the best that I can ever do is to say that it's through trial and error, and that's why you have something called a space a palette on which to uh, try the color, and um, if you don't have the palette, you do it right on your uh, right on the canvas. Here I am applying some pure white paint uh, for the uh, for the snowy. Uh, side of these, uh, for the sunny side of these snow-covered boulders. Um, uh, using pure color is uh, probably one of the more interesting parts of, uh, of painting uh, because it uh, obviously avoids that, that great uh, dilemma of color mixing, but it also means that you are dealing with uh, nice pure tones. And um, the, uh, the need to have pure tones is the sign b between the amateur and the, and, the, um, and the professional. The professional seems to be able to use colors with a clearer uh, concept. Uh, and and uh, uh, amateurism disappears when the use of color becomes more, uh, you, be, you become more adept at the use of color. So, um, so when you're dealing with something uh, as, uh, as elusive as, uh, as the subtle color, there's nothing really too difficult about working with reds and oranges and yellows and greens and blues. But when you're dealing with grays uh, and, uh, and the different gradations of blue, you've got yourself a different kind of a problem. And uh, I suppose the electronic medium that I'm working with and the ability to, to have uh, this subject matter available to study uh, for a 
very long period of time is uh, probably one of the better uh, teaching tools that anybody can find. So uh, don't, uh, don't hesitate for a moment to get out there and try to uh, decipher what you're seeing with the use of your camcorder. Um, I have, I've been talking about this for a while and I think that it's probably a, a, one of the more important pieces of advice that I can do is to tell the people to use this. Um, I'm going to be uh, obviously running out of time and I'm going to uh, not abandon these these rock things but as I close I'll be able to be doing the details of what these uh, of what these um, uh, boulders uh, these ice covered boulders are, are doing here uh, but I do want to get the uh, the grasses in the grasses are uh, popping up through the ice. That means that I prepare the uh, area where there is snow um, by, uh, by covering it, and you probably can't even see this happening, but it's got to be there. And then also there are the little areas inside the ice, uh, the snow areas, that are covered with uh, shadowy places. So uh, they are put on first. Maybe, uh, let's, hope, uh, let's hope that this will work. There is a touch of, um, there's a touch of Van Dyke Brown in here. But here is, the, uh, here is what looks uh, totally incomprehensible on the, on the monitor and maybe uh, incomprehensible about what I'm doing, but I think that you'll see in just a moment what I'm after. I'm after uh, lay, putting the snow on first and, and rendering the grass on, oh, on top of it. Uh, and that's pretty, much, uh, that's pretty much what I'm about to do right now. There is a nice, lovely, um, very mauvish uh, shadow here in the foreground uh, that the, that the uh, grasses are going to be on. It's really quite brilliant. This is a this is a very shadowy, uh, wonderful, brilliant, and it changes so often. The uh, the the shadows do change very rapidly. So there is the uh, now I'm going to pick up this nice uh, trusty brush and a combination of some. A sap green, a touch of Van Dyke brown, a little bit of ultramarine blue is going to give me this, uh, well, uh, what you might say, a, a general over, uh, over green tone of what is growing down there. Um, the sun is helping to make it more brilliant than you would imagine because um, this is, uh, these are beach grasses uh, that have been cut down by the wind, but they are also uh, remaining green for a reason that I fail to be able to explain to anybody. They. Um, you would think that when this ki these kind of temperatures hit uh, the green stuff, uh, that they would in fact uh, just um, turn into brown and blow away, but they don't. They're, so there's a resiliency to this, uh, to this Long Island uh, climate here that allows these wonderful things to happen. I'm, 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 I'm uh, reducing some of this uh, green color to a little bit more uh, liquid because you want, you'll want texture. and. Um, texture and variations in color. So here's the, I'm now, I'm now working over the area that I prepared for the, uh, as the snow underneath all this grass. And you can, you can see that it actually works rather well. Uh, uh, and, and you would do it in, in, in such a way that you wouldn't paint around the snow. Uh, the grasses are, let me see, what is that? Oh, this is all foreground stuff. Good. Um, the uh, the grasses are all here in the foreground, and they are uh, they are changing in color as the light and the shadows hit them. Um, uh, next uh, next month is the uh, is the at the end of uh, February of, of next month. Uh, providing the weather does not play these really these really crummy tricks on you, I will be up again for the for the live show on the last Tuesday of the month and um, come up with uh, hopefully some scenes that do, do not include snow and ice. I think that we've probably all had our um, uh, a belly full, as you might say, of this, and uh, it may look like it uh, would begin to subside. Uh, I, I always start counting the days until spring, and I believe there are something like 81 or so odd days before spring hits us, uh, which is, of course, uh, something that we all, um, as soon as the snow falls, you, keep th you start thinking about spring. And before too long goes by, I'm going to see all these grasses get done, and it, it, it looks comprehensible to me that the grasses are being applied over the snow in patches, they did grows in clumps here and there, and and it straightens itself out. Uh, I will continue to do that, but before the time really runs out, I'm going to clean my palette knife and put that 
uh, try to get the, uh, the, the snow blow, the snow that is blown across that boat uh, uh, done. And if it works, well, then I figure I won this game. If it doesn't work, I shall have to do it by brush. But there is definitely, um, I've got a very small amount of, uh, of white on this palette knife, and I'm going to see if I can't just quietly, uh, just slightly um, run it across the top of this boat to see if I can maybe get that effect. Uh, if it works, that's fine. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all right. Um, for for a quick for a quick um, for a quick swipe at it, I think it probably is. Let me see. Is there some on the bottom? Yeah, there's some down here too. Um, that's probably about as uh, as near to to uh, to the illusion that I can get that this is uh, blown across here, sort of. Um, uh, the line, I believe there's a much sharper line, yeah, it's a lapstrake boat, which means that the lines of the shadow, uh, and I learned that term lapstrake when my son was growing up and could not live life without a boat, and I found out that these boats are called lapstrake, and obviously this has got some, some shadows which uh, denote that, the type of boat that it is, and uh, well, there we have it, there is a s sort of a, sort of a, well, it's a fairly decent suggestion. Up here, there's that little that little ridge line that here that um, that of course when you pull it across the driveway, it makes a terrible noise, and I don't know the name of it. Well, here is um. Oh, I need to have something very dark here because of the underside of the boat turns, and you see it underneath. Okay. Well, let me see. Anything else? Yeah, a few details. There's the, here's this little here's the little um uh, the uh, cleat. That, uh, that you tie the boat to, which obviously uh, doesn't have a, a rope on it, and uh, it should have, and uh, anyway, there's that little detail. Oops. There we go, yes, and this is another, another line here. Well, uh, the grasses, uh, continue the grasses, and so that the foreground has got this uh, the completion of this, it's, um, it's always interesting when I can uh, uh, step back and say, well, in a very short space of time, you get the message across. Uh, uh, naturally, uh, more detail and more time and more observation makes for a, um, a clearer picture, but sometimes not as a spontaneous a picture as you get when you're really uh, fighting time and um, the elements, if you're out there. I can guarantee you that if I were out there working on this, I would not linger any longer longer than necessary. Uh, I usually paint in my car, and the car is something of a protection, but then after a while, if you've turned the motor off, it does get uh, rather chilly. So uh, the speed is, uh, is of course, uh, a, a vital uh, element to, to deal with, and that comes with experience and with technique. And of course, it comes with an overdose of uh, senselessness going out into deep uh, and uh, trying weather to try to record uh, scenes. Uh, however, that's my thing. That's my shtick. Just like when I did on the live show, uh, the, showed you the ice clamors. Those people choose that profession, and they have a good time at it. And I've shown this one, and whether we've chosen this one, and whether or not it's comfortable sometimes and not so comfortable other times is all my choice. Well, here we have it. I've gotten the signal that we've got a very short time left and that I probably should sign off, which I will do, uh, but I want to put a few cracks in the, um, in the, uh, in the ice here with, uh, that I see on the, um, uh, on the uh, reference material. There's a rather, a rather heavy one running here, and um, it cracks off that way, and uh, maybe, maybe the whole story is, um, is becoming more comprehensible. So in the meantime, I'm glad you watched. I hope you got something out of it. And um, I'll just continue to paint until the time comes that we're all done. Uh, I'll sign this, and maybe, as the, um, maybe as we sign off, I will uh, just uh, put my signature somewhere, either in the weeds or on the ice. I think maybe on the ice, I've probably earned that. Uh, there is a nice dark place down here where this is obviously throwing a very heavy shadow. And then there's another one down here. Are we winding up? Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, goodbye, everybody. Uh, see you next month. So long.